A dictionary is a collection of words in one or more specific languages, often listed alphabetically, with usage of information, definitions, etymologies, phonetics, pronunciations, translation, and other information. Or a book of words in one language with their equivalents in another, also known as a lexicon. According to Nielsen a dictionary may be regarded as a lexicographical product that is characterized by three significant features, it has been prepared for one or more functions. It contains data that have been selected for the purpose of fulfilling those functions. And its lexicographic structures link and establish relationships between the data so that they can meet the needs of users and fulfill the functions of the dictionary. A broad distinction is made between general and specialized dictionaries. Specialized dictionaries do not contain information about words that are used in language for general purposes or Euro words used by ordinary people in everyday situations. Lexical items that describe concepts in specific fields are usually called terms instead of words, although there is no consensus whether lexicology and terminology are two different fields of study. In theory, general dictionaries are supposed to be semasiological, mapping word to definition, while specialized dictionaries are supposed to be onomasiological, first identifying concepts and then establishing the terms used to designate them. In practice, the two approaches are used for both types. There are other types of dictionaries that don't fit neatly in the above distinction, for instance bilingual dictionaries, dictionaries of synonyms, or rhyming dictionaries. The word dictionary is usually understood to refer to a monolingual general purpose dictionary. A different dimension on which dictionaries are sometimes distinguished is whether they are prescriptive or descriptive, the latter being in theory largely based on linguistic corpus studies or euro this is the case of most modern dictionaries. However, this distinction cannot be upheld in the strictest sense. The choice of headwords is considered itself of prescriptive nature. For instance, dictionaries avoid having too many taboo words in that position. Stylistic indications present in many modern dictionaries is considered less than objectively descriptive as well. Although the first recorded dictionaries date back to Sumerian times, the systematic study of dictionaries as objects of scientific interest themselves is a 20th century enterprise, called lexicography, and largely initiated by Ladislav Zgusta. The birth of the new discipline was not without controversy the practical dictionary makers being sometimes accused by others of astonishing lack of method and critical self-reflection. History, the oldest known dictionaries were Akkadian Empire cuneiform tablets with bilingual Sumeriani Euro-Akkadian word lists, discovered in Ebla and dated roughly 2300 BCE. The early 2nd millennium BCE era equals Hubulu glossary as the canonical Babylonian version of such bilingual Sumerian word lists. A Chinese dictionary, the C. 3rd century BCE era, was the earliest surviving monolingual dictionary. Although some sources cite the C. 800 BCE Shi Tzupian as a dictionary, modern scholarship considers it a calligraphic compendium of Chinese characters from Zhou Dynasty bronzes. Philators of Kos wrote a pioneering vocabulary disorderly words which explained the meanings of rare Homeric and other literary words words from local dialects, and technical terms. Apollonius the Sophist wrote the oldest surviving Homeric lexicon. The first Sanskrit dictionary, the Amarakor, was written by Amaris in a C. 4th century CE. Written in verse, it listed around 10,000 words. According to the Neon Shoki, the first Japanese dictionary was the long-lost 682 CE Naina glossary of Chinese characters. The oldest existing Japanese dictionary, the C. 835 CE Tinrei Banshimeji, was also a glossary of written Chinese. A 9th century CE Irish dictionary, Sanas Kormake, contained etymologies and explanations of over 1,400 Irish words. In India around 1320, Amir Kyos Rokampil the Kaligi Bari which mainly dealt with Hind V and Persian words. Arabic dictionaries were compiled between the 8th and 14th centuries CE, organizing words in rhyme order, by alphabetical order of the radicals, or according to the alphabetical order of the first letter. The modern system was mainly used in specialist dictionaries, such as those of terms from the Quran and Hadith, 
while most general use dictionaries, such as the Lazan al Arab and al Kamas al Mu'it, listed words in the alphabetical order of the radicals. The Kamas al Mu'it is the first handy dictionary in Arabic, which includes only words and their definitions, eliminating the supporting examples used in such dictionaries as the Lazan and the Oxford English Dictionary. In medieval Europe, glossaries with equivalents for Latin words in vernacular or simpler Latin were in use. The Catholican by Johannes Balbus, a large grammatical work with an alphabetical lexicon, was widely adopted. It served as the basis for several bilingual dictionaries and was one of the earliest books to be printed. In 1502 Ambrogio Calapino's Dictionarium was published, originally a monolingual Latin dictionary, which over the course of the 16th century was enlarged to become a multilingual glossary. In 1532 Robert Estian published the Thesaurus Linguae Latinae and in 1572 his son Henri Estian published the Thesaurus Linguae Gracie, which served up to the 19th century as the basis of Greek lexicography. The first monolingual dictionary written in a Romance language was Sebastio N. Covrubius de Soro de la Lengua Castellana o Espar plus or minus Ola, published in 1611 in Madrid. In 1612 the first edition of the Vocabulario dell'Accademia della Crusca, for Italian, was published. It served as the model for similar works in French, Spanish and English. In 1690 in Rotterdam was published, posthumously, the Dictionnaire Universal by Antoine Furacherie for French. In 1694 appeared the first edition of the Dictionnaire de l'Acadie Copyright My Frana Section Es. Between 1712 and 1721 was published the Vocabulario Portazi Latino written by Rafael Bluto. The Real Academia Espar Plus or Minus Ola published the first edition of the Dictionario de la Lengua Espar Plus or Minus Ola in 1780, but their Dictionario de Autoridades, which included quotes taken from literary works, was published in 1726. The Totius Latinitatis Lexicon by Egidio Forsellini was firstly published in 1777. It has formed the basis of all similar works that have since been published. The first edition of A Greek English Lexicon by Henry George Liddell and Robert Scott appeared in 1843. This work remained the basic dictionary of Greek until the end of the 20th century. And in 1858 was published the first volume of the Deutsches Wap Paragraph Rotterbuch by the Brothers Grimm. The work was completed in 1961. Between 1861 and 1874 was published the Dizionario della Lingua Italiana by Nicola Squared Tomozio. A Permil Mar Litra copyright published the Dictionnaire de la Langue Frena between 1863 and 1872. In the same year 1863 appeared the first volume of the Wudenbuch der Niederländische Tal which was completed in 1998. Also in 1863 Vladimir Ivanovich Dahl published the explanatory dictionary of the living Great Russian language. The Duden Dictionary dates back to 1880, and is currently the prescriptive source for the spelling of German. In 1898 was printed the first volume of the Svenska Akademian Zordbok, whose publication is still in progress. English dictionaries, the earliest dictionaries in the English language were glossaries of French, Italian or Latin words along with definitions of the foreign words in English. Of note, the word dictionary was invented by an Englishman called John of Garland in 1220, he had written a book Dictionarius to help with Latin diction. An early non-alphabetical list of 8,000 English words was the elementary created by Richard Mulcaster in 1582. The first purely English alphabetical dictionary was a table alphabetical, written by English schoolteacher Robert Cordray in 1604. The only surviving copy is found at the Bodleian Library in Oxford. Yet this early effort, as well as the many imitators which followed it, was seen as unreliable and nowhere near definitive. Philip Stanhope, 4th Earl of Chesterfield was still lamenting in 1754, 150 years after Cordray's publication that it is a sort of disgrace to our nation, that hitherto we have had no Euro standard of our language. Our dictionaries at present being more properly what our neighbours the Dutch and the Germans call theirs, word books, than dictionaries in the superior sense of the title. It was not until Samuel Johnson's A Dictionary of the English Language that a truly noteworthy, reliable English dictionary was deemed to have been produced, 
and the fact that today many people still mistakenly believe Johnson to have written the first English dictionary is a testimony to this legacy. By this stage, dictionaries had evolved to contain textual references for most words, and were arranged alphabetically, rather than by topic. Johnson's master work could be judged as the first to bring all these elements together, creating the first modern dictionary. Johnson's dictionary remained the English language standard for over 150 years, until the Oxford University Press began writing and releasing the Oxford English Dictionary in short fascicles from 1884 onwards. It took nearly 50 years to finally complete the huge work, and they finally released the complete OED in 12 volumes in 1928. It remains the most comprehensive and trusted English language dictionary to this day, with revisions and updates added by a dedicated team every three months. One of the main contributors to this modern day dictionary was an ex army surgeon, William Chester Minor, a convicted murderer who was confined to an asylum for the criminally insane. American English Dictionaries, in 1806, American Noah Webster published his first dictionary a compendious dictionary of the English language. In 1807 Webster began compiling an expanded and fully comprehensive dictionary, an American dictionary of the English language. It took 27 years to complete. To evaluate the etymology of words, Webster learned 26 languages, including Old English, German, Greek, Latin, Italian, Spanish, French, Hebrew, Arabic, and Sanskrit. Webster completed his dictionary during his year abroad in 1825 in Paris, France, and at the University of Cambridge. His book contained 70,000 words, of which 12,000 had never appeared in a published dictionary before. As a spelling reformer, Webster believed that English spelling rules were unnecessarily complex, so his dictionary introduced American English spellings, replacing color with color, substituting wagon for wagon and printing center instead of center. He also added American words, like skunk, and squash, that did not appear in British dictionaries. At the age of 70, Webster published his dictionary in 1828. It sold 2,500 copies. In 1840, the second edition was published in two volumes. Austin explores the intersection of lexicographical and poetic practices in American literature and attempts to map out a lexical poetics using Webster's definitions as his base. He explores how American poets used Webster's dictionaries, often drawing upon his lexicography in order to express their wordplay. Austin explicates key definitions from both the compendious and American dictionaries, and brings into its discourse a range of concerns, including the politics of American English, the question of national identity and culture in the early moments of American independence, and the poetics of citation and of definition. Austin concludes that Webster's dictionaries helped redefine Americanism in an era of an emergent and unstable American political and cultural identity. Webster himself saw the dictionaries as a nationalizing device to separate America from Britain, calling his project a federal language, with competing forces towards regularity on the one hand and innovation on the other. Austin suggests that the contradictions of Webster's lexicography were part of a larger play between liberty and order within American intellectual discourse, with some pulled toward Europe and the past, and others pulled toward America and the new future. For an international appreciation of the importance of Webster's dictionaries in setting the norms of the English language, see Firk. Per Nashandra Arya Bashokosha the Pernashandra Arya Bashokosha is a monumental seven volume Arya dictionary work of about 9,500 pages, published between 1930 and 1940. Gopal Chandra Praharaj worked over nearly three decades to complete the dictionary. This dictionary contained nearly 185,000 words, their meaning in four different languages Arya, English, Hind, and Bengali. It is an encyclopedic work touching on various aspects of the Oriya language and Odisha region, as well as many topics of general interest. Types In a general dictionary, each word may have multiple meanings. Some dictionaries include each separate meaning in the order of most common usage while others list definitions in historical order, with the oldest usage first. In many languages, words can appear in many different forms, 
but only the undeclined or unconjugated form appears as the head word in most dictionaries. Dictionaries are most commonly found in the form of a book, but some newer dictionaries, like Stardict and the new Oxford American Dictionary are dictionary software running on PDAs or computers. There are also many online dictionaries accessible via the Internet. Specialized Dictionaries According to the Manual of Specialized Lexicographies a specialized dictionary is a lexicon that focuses upon a specific subject field. Following the description in the bilingual LSP dictionary lexicographers categorize specialized dictionaries into three types. A multi-field dictionary broadly covers several subject fields, a single field dictionary narrowly covers one particular subject field, and a subfield dictionary covers a singular field. For example, the 23 language interactive terminology for Europe is a multi-field dictionary, the American National Biography is a single field, and the African American National Biography Project is a subfield dictionary. In terms of the above coverage distinction between minimizing dictionaries and maximizing dictionaries, multi-field dictionaries tend to minimize coverage across subject fields where a single field and subfield dictionaries tend to maximize coverage within a limited subject field. Another variant is the glossary, an alphabetical list of defined terms in a specialized field, such as medicine. Defining dictionaries, the simplest dictionary, a defining dictionary, provides a core glossary of the simplest meanings of the simplest concepts. From these, other concepts can be explained and defined, in particular for those who are first learning a language. In English, the commercial defining dictionaries typically include only one or two meanings of under 2,000 words. With these, the rest of English, and even the 4,000 most common English idioms and metaphors, can be defined. Prescriptive versus descriptive. Lexicographers apply two basic philosophies to the defining of words, prescriptive or descriptive. Noah Webster, intent on forging a distinct identity for the American language, altered spellings and accentuated differences in meaning and pronunciation of some words. This is why American English now uses the spelling color while the rest of the English-speaking world prefers color. Large 20th-century dictionaries such as the Oxford English Dictionary and Webster's Third are descriptive, and attempt to describe the actual use of words. Most dictionaries of English now apply the descriptive method to a word's definition, and then, outside of the definition itself, add information alerting readers to attitudes which may influence their choices on words often considered vulgar, offensive, erroneous, or easily confused. Merriam-Webster is subtle only adding italicized notations such as, sometimes offensive or nonstand. American Heritage goes further, discussing issues separately in numerous usage notes. Encarta provides similar notes, but is more prescriptive, offering warnings and admonitions against the use of certain words considered by many to be offensive or illiterate, such as, an offensive term for, or a taboo term meaning. Because of the widespread use of dictionaries in schools, and their acceptance by many as language authorities, their treatment of the language does affect usage to some degree, with even the most descriptive dictionaries providing conservative continuity. In the long run, however, the meanings of words in English are primarily determined by usage, and the language is being changed and created every day. As Jorge Luis Borges says in the prologue to El Otro, El mismo it is often forgotten that are artificial repositories, put together well after the languages they define. The roots of language are irrational and of a magical nature. Dictionaries for natural language processing, in contrast to traditional dictionaries, which are designed to be used by human beings, dictionaries for natural language processing are built to be used by computer programs. Such a dictionary does not need to be able to be printed on paper. The structure of the content is not linear, ordered entry by entry but has the form of a complex graph. Because most of these dictionaries are used to control machine translations or cross-lingual information retrieval the content is usually multilingual and usually of huge size. In order to allow formalized exchange and merging of dictionaries, an ISO standard called Lexical Markup Framework has been defined and used among the industrial and academic community. Other types bilingual dictionary, electronic dictionary, encyclopedic dictionary, 
Monolingual Learner's Dictionary, Advanced Learner's Dictionary. By Sound, Phonetic Dictionary, Rhyming Dictionary. Reverse Dictionary, Visual Dictionary, Pronunciation. Dictionaries for languages for which the pronunciation of words is not apparent from their spelling, such as the English language, usually provide the pronunciation, often using the International Phonetic Alphabet. For example, the definition for the word dictionary might be followed by the phonemic spelling. American English dictionaries, however, often use their own pronunciation spelling systems, for example Dictionary Dark A to the first issue unregistered trademark and RA, while the IPA is more commonly used within the British Commonwealth countries. Yet others use a respelling system. For example, Dictionary may respell DIK she unregistered trademark Nyerie. Some online or electronic dictionaries provide recordings of words being spoken. Examples Major English dictionaries. Dictionaries of other languages, histories and descriptions of the dictionaries of other languages include Chinese dictionaries, Dutch dictionaries, French dictionaries, German dictionaries, Japanese dictionaries, Scottish Gaelic dictionaries. Scottish language dictionaries, Dykhada dictionary, online dictionaries, the age of the internet brought online dictionaries to the desktop and, more recently, to the smartphone. Skinner in 2013 noted that, among the top 10 lookups on Merriam Webster online at this moment are holistic, pragmatic, caveat, esoteric, and bourgeois. Teaching users about words they don't near Euro unregistered trademark T already know has been Historically, a name of lexicography, and modern dictionaries do this well. There exist a number of websites which operate as online dictionaries, usually with a specialized focus. Some of them have exclusively user-driven content, often consisting of neologisms. Some of the more notable examples include See also Notes References Bergen Alls, Henning Tarp, Sven Ed's Manual of Specialized Lexicography, The Preparation of Specialized Dictionaries. Amsterdam, John Benjamin's Publishing. ISBN A90-272-1612-6A, Edman, Peter. Cho, Si Young. A Brief History of English Lexicography. A Brief History of English Lexicography. Technische Universite Currency T. Berlin. Archived from the original on March 9, 2008. Retrieved December 17, 2010. A. Landall, Sydney 1. 1984. Dictionaries, The Art and Craft of Lexicography. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN A 0 521 78040 3. A. Nielsen, Sandro. The Bilingual LSP Dictionary Principles and Practice for Legal Language. Tar 1 Quarter Binge. Guntanar. ISBN A3 8233 8A, Nielsen, Sandro. The Effect of Lexicographical Information Costs on Dictionary Making and Use. Lexicos 18, 170 Euro 189. Isner 1684-4904A, Atkins, BTS and Rundle, Michael The Oxford Guide to Practical Lexicography, Oxford. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-927771-1, Winchester, Simon. The Professor and the Madman, A Tale of Murder, Insanity, and the Making of the Oxford English Dictionary. New York, Harper Perennial. ISBN A 0-06-099486-XA. P.G.J. Van Sterkenberg, ed. A Practical Guide to Lexicography. John Benjamin's Publishing Company. ISBN A 978 one 58811-381-8. External links, Dictionary at DMOZ, Glossary of Dictionary Terms by the Oxford University Press, Texts on Wikisource, Dictionary. Collier's New Encyclopedia 1921A, Dictionary. Encyclopædia Britannica 1911A, Dictionary. New International Encyclopedia 1905A, Wikisource, Languages.